Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out, does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? Zintis, it is fantastic to be with you in New Jersey right now, in your home. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us here. Um, now, I've got to say Zintis, that's such a cool name, but that's a Latvian name? It is, yeah. Both my parents are from Latvia. Wow. Um, and you don't normally use your last name, do you, neither? Not professionally, no. For years I had my yoga studio and people assumed that Zintis was a made-up name and that I had some other name. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just the one name and now, you know, the bank wants it, you know, the post office wants it, but that's it. So um, growing up in Latvia or growing up in America? No, growing up in America, Kalamazoo, Michigan. So there was a large Latvian community there. and. So there were thousands of Latvians. We were the largest minority, ethnic minority, within the city of Kalamazoo, Latvians. Was there anything, when you look back to your childhood, where you could say, oh yeah, you know, there was something different about me, or I was connected into something, or I had a, a mystical experience? You know, I, not because I'm, we're Latvian. What really happened was that my parents were, I don't want to say they were hippies, my mother kind of almost, they would have, she would have wanted to be one. This was in the 60s. So we had a great many people coming through our home, um, a lot of whom were very transient and mostly Latvian, but obviously older than I, but younger than my parents in their 20s generally. And so I was exposed to a lot of different religious ideas and uh, cultural ideas and spiritual ideas. and. Something along the way just really clicked and I just was drawn to this path. So on your path then, um, I know there was a lot of material that you would have uh, consumed and read as you were sort of looking into, you know, what is this? Why am I here? Right, yeah? right, right, yeah. uh, I think you came across the Seth material. I did. Well. I, you know, I was like 13 years old and I'm sure you've seen Seth Speaks. I mean, it's a massive volume of unedited channeling which is like incredibly dense. And then it had some bizarre photographs in there too, in that original book at least. And I don't know where, somebody, one of these people brought it into our home and I found it and I just devoured it. And I was about 13 years old at the time. And just, that was it. That, from that point forward, any channeling that I could find, I would really get into it and really resonate with it in a, in a very powerful way. Yeah, because I think that the Seth material helped so many people. It's actually funny, I was just with Rick Stack, who was one of the original ESP class members okay. with Jane Roberts. Sure. He, he spent uh, 100 sessions with Seth. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got to interact with him. Now he now has yeah. run the Seth Center. So Seth is part of this documentary. Oh, cool. uh, yeah. and, and, and when you say what you said, I was like, yeah, yeah you know, in my, in my head, I'm like, Christ, I was just with someone that actually yeah, sure. knew Jane yeah. and Robert right. quite well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but you moved away from that material in the end, didn't you, I think? 
Well, at, at some point, as I discovered who I am, and then ultimately as I started channeling myself, you know, it just, I, I guess the truth lives within me now or comes through me. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same truth. I mean, obviously, you know, it's like everybody's, but it, I, I kind of feel that I want to stay with what is mine now rather than searching actively for what other people offer. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, that's the way I've been approaching it the last probably six or seven years. It makes complete sense because most people I've spoke to have said the same thing. Have they really? Yeah. In a different way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want to be influenced. I don't. You know. I want. You know. My material to come from. You know. Not having. You know, be. Not be too studied in the field because mm -hmm. of the, the influence factor as well. And it's always interesting. You know. After interviewing. You know. Forty nine people now, including yourself. That yeah, was only going to yeah. go up for channels. That. Um, there is some commonalities in the material. It's said in a different way, but sometimes it can be very different. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Did your parents ever discover your, that you had this gift? Did they ever know of you with this gift? Well, it's interesting. My mother has a very strong sense of psychic, let's say. In fact, uh, we used to, when I was a child, we would communicate um, without speaking and, and actually later a childhood maybe but I remember one incident um, she was driving me to my piano lesson I was 15 years old and I had taken up cigarettes um, which was not something she felt comfortable discussing with me so I'm sitting in the car next to her and suddenly I have this really strong thought you know like you really shouldn't smoke and I'm like well you smoke <laughs> <laughs> which she did, but very occasionally. I'm mean, not that I smoked a lot, you know, but um, so we had this whole nonverbal conversation. And afterwards, without really bringing up this incident, I said, why don't you develop that gift, that gift of uh, whatever it is, you know, ESP or psychic or she said she's frightened of it. So I don't know if that's come down in our family in some way or it was just her. Um, I didn't really know her mother. Um, she died when I was very young. But um, so it was like an interesting kind of tangent to what I am and who I am. Has mum crossed over now? No, she's living. She's living. So she knows of your work. She does. Yeah. We haven't really spoken much of it. I mean, I, in fact, she knows you're here today talking to me. She lives in Riga, um, Latvia, and I email her regularly. We keep in touch. and. Yeah, I said, well, this guy from England's coming and we're going to have a little chat and oh, that's, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> because actually, you know, you've not publicly put yourself out there too much. No. Why not? Um, I, I wouldn't mind being out there. It just hasn't happened and I'm not driven to. I find people find me. I mean, I get emails and say, I'd like to have a session. Um, I ask where, you know, how, you know, it's various sources. Sometimes it's referrals, sometimes it's my website, sometimes it's Sedona Journal article that I wrote five years ago. I, you know, it like, it, it you know, varies. But um, I don't really have the venue, I guess, or, or the, I'm not driven to be big, you have hundreds of people come to me at once. I enjoy groups very much. I recently did one for about 12. Ladies, they're usually ladies, they're usually women. I mean, the audience, and I have to say, um, it was a lot of fun. It was arranged by a yoga teacher in a studio, and yeah, it was great. Well, maybe things are going to change for you. I mean, me being here right now, that's a change. It is a change, yeah, it's a change. You must be ready for it. I am. I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm very happy to. And my other I, life, I, I do body work, I do healer, I'm a Reiki master, I, all of that. It feels very connected. I used to be a yoga teacher, um, but that's all very physical. And as I get older, I'd rather do something that was less so. But doing the Reiki and all that kind of stuff, that opens people up 100%. Absolutely. If they want to hear a voice, do that. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I honestly, I was channeling long before I was a taught to channel officially at the end of a Reiki session. And I did many, many thousands of Reiki sessions. Um, it was really my primary source of income for a number of years. And um, I had the opportunity to work full time doing it. Um, at the end of each session, I would kind of summarize. I would say, you know, this is what, and frequently I found myself saying things that I had no clue I was going to say. 
Um, I had no idea where it was coming from. It was my own voice, but I was listening. I'm like, wow, like, should I be saying this? But I always trusted that whatever I would say at that point in a session was what needed to be heard. And I got a lot of affirmation on that, you know, Absolutely. later on, you know, people would say, wow, I mean, that was just the perfect thing. Yeah, isn't that so nice when that comes through like that? Because that's really like, you know what, I'm going to keep carrying on. This is helping people. Right. This right. is making a difference. Um, and I think I wanted to introduce you as well. I think I was brought here to introduce you because to show that you can do this work and there's no, it doesn't need to be a, a, a need to be famous in this work or a need to be known doing it. Because I think channeling nowadays is becoming a bit more cool, it's becoming a bit more um, accessible to people. I've been in audiences where people just walking up to the stage and they're asking the, the entity and I'm like, this is normal. Hmm. And it is, yeah, okay. you know, because normally going up to a medium, that's acceptable, even right. though it's like, well, where is it coming from, right, really? Right, right, yeah. And the whole channeling phenomenon is a different yeah. type of, of, of um, process. So, yeah. What is channeling to you? Channeling to me, it's uh, for myself, do you think, is, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I, it, I'm not sure what I believe. I believe or I know for a fact that when I have brought Joshua through in a channeling session, the people that he has spoken to are very pleased with what they have heard. In many cases, I believe I have changed lives. Um, and again, I, I hesitate to say I. I mean, I didn't do a thing. I mean, I really don't think that it's me. I don't have the ego involvement. I open myself and words come out and they seem to help. People. And that's really been what my life has been about, helping people, being a healer, teaching people how to live a better life, a healthier life. And so it goes along with that. So for me, channeling is just another tool for people to use to, to really try to move along their path toward whatever it is that we're moving toward. I mean, it's not going to be total realization, but it hopefully will be some positive step in and some assistance to them. When did Joshua start to come through then? Joshua's been coming through for, I, mean, I have to think back, but about, about six years. I, I was trained, I believe, eight years ago. Um, and initially, when I got up enough courage to channel, um, to do it for someone else, um, and at first it was with friends, it was just testing things out, seeing how it would go. There were a number of entities or a number of energies. I don't know that I even call them entities. I, I call them energies that, that came through and it was like they were trying to fit themselves to my energy so that it would be comfortable. Then for about six months, um, we were calling this particular energy or entity, Benjamin, um, was speaking to people. And then one day Joshua came through and I was working with a friend with whom I'd been working the whole time. Um, kind of training myself, he would ask questions, we would record a lot of stuff, uh, write it out. And he said, well, who are you, Joshua? You sound a lot like Benjamin. And at that point, Joshua said, yes, we are of a similar energy, but I am the final fine tuning, or well, that's not what he said, he said it more eloquently, um, of, of the energy that will fit best with the channel's energy. And honestly, it does. Um, there are occasions when I channel someone else or something else or however we want to refer to it, um, usually on the request of a client I'm working with. And I know that that has happened simply because afterwards I feel much different. So when Joshua is coming through, um, do you feel like you're in the back seat of a car and Joshua is taking the steering wheel in a sense? Completely. And, and I feel as though I'm listening to a radio broadcast of my voice speaking with somebody else. I have some awareness at that moment, but later on I have very little awareness of what has happened. Certainly there is almost, I would say, no awareness much later. I mean, within the first hour or two, there's like residual something and then it just goes away. It's not my business. I don't, it's between Joshua and the person who is being talk to. So when people are channeling, when others are channeling, is there any sort of discernment that you use 
not that you study any other channel as much nowadays at all. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. yeah. But if what is discernment for you in regards to other channelers? Well, I always, when, when I was listening to somebody else or reading someone else, it, I would trust how that resonates with me. Sometimes, frequently it would. I mean, that was why I'm drawn to channeling. And honestly, I think most channelers are channeling very high energy and very, you know, beings of light, however we wish to describe them. Um, occasionally, I would read something that really, I, I, felt, I felt very badly about it, and I would simply walk away from it. Um, for myself, I am truly of the opinion that it, it's my energy that works with Joshua's energy. And I try my best to be as clear and as clean energetically, physically as I can. And I trust that that will then echo through. Um, I don't know if he would say something that I would completely disagree with. I don't know if that would happen or not. I, I just don't know what gets said. So if he's bringing something through that's quite like, as the channel, you know, you're not getting that, you're, what do you mean by that? Uh, you wouldn't know that that's maybe been said unless you watched it back. I would not know, but I'm one, I don't know if I would actually, if it would come through me. Um, I would imagine that it does. I mean, things get said to people that I have no clue about. I mean, they ask, people ask very personal questions, as you know, and, like, how would I know? I mean, I don't know. But I think that if somebody asked something that was with evil intent, which is so unlikely for a client of a channeler, um, I, I don't know that it would even get that far. Does that make sense to Yes, you? it was manipulative or some, some other, right, other way. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, for my discernment as well, I, I always try to go with channels that... Um, you know, come from a loving viewpoint, you know, I don't have to agree with it, but as long as it's kind of positive and it's kind of there to help us, I'm not anti if they come out with something negative, but as long as it's, you know, not fear-based. Right, exactly. We have enough of that in this reality. Exactly, exactly. Right, and, and, and anything can be said in a, in a positive, loving way, almost anything. It truly can, and in a, in a way that promotes growth and doesn't cause the recipient of that information to shut down or become fearful. And that's, I think, what needs to happen. How much of this information that you bring through do you get able, to, do you get to study in a sense? I don't really study it at all. I, I am obviously familiar with whatever I transcribe and put on my website, um, you know, those things. And, and I end up doing a little bit of editing. I try to keep it as clean as I can, but Joshua tends to speak in very long, rambling thought patterns that don't always come across very well on paper. You know, so, so, but for a private session, I have never once listened to anyone's private session. It's not, I just feel very strongly it's a personal thing. And I do tell my clients that this is between them and Joshua. But since Joshua's come through, have you found that you are coming, that uh, you, you've changed, that you're coming from a different space with the way that, you know, issues happen in your life, which we all, we've all got something going on, but can you uh, act upon them from a different perspective with a different no, it's attitude? quite possible. I feel that I've gone through a tremendous growth personally in the last seven years. I've changed relationships, I've changed where I live, I've, I've made different alterations and with always the intention that I, I'm ready for change and I, I wish it to be positive and good, um, I feel very supported. I also, it, it's interesting and, and um, perhaps other channelers feel the same way, it's hard to get information for myself. So if I, yeah, if I say, Joshua, you know, what should I do? I mean, obviously there's a big empty space as a response. Well, when I was training my friend, whose name is Fernando, who I was trained, he was helping me train, would sometimes try to sneak in questions for me. It was about the time when I was thinking of putting my house on the market. So he would be asking questions for himself and then he would say, and this he reported later to me, he would say, well, will the Chandler's house sell quickly? And then Joshua, I, I think he said to me once, well, Joshua kind of chuckled and said, 
the channel is blocking my response. <laughs> so even like when he was when when he was trying to trick us, you know, it, it didn't quite work. So you know, it's. It, that seems to be the case. I've interviewed a lot of people and it doesn't seem to be always for them. It seems to be for other people. But, you know, it can answer some questions. There are, there are answers to some questions, you know, but I think in general, it seems to be for others. It does. I, I would say, though, when I have completed a channeling session, I'm initially a little bit tired for just a very short time. And then I feel very uplifted. I feel very energetic and, and very clean in a way, energetically clean, um, which lasts generally for the rest of the day or for, for a period of time. So I do believe strongly that bringing him through is a, is a very positive experience for me. Is it something you share with many people in, in your life that you do this? Is it very private? I don't, I don't ever hide it. Um, I, I can say I'm, I do a number of things. I, I sometimes I say I'm a yoga teacher or a, a writer, which I also do. But you know, it's I have business cards I hand out readily. It's a channeling. That's interesting. That's interesting. And you, have you noticed just how much the, the word channeling is used in the media nowadays as well? You know? It might be. I honestly, I don't. I don't follow the media much. Uh, I. Try to stay out of that. <laughs> I was watching a documentary with uh, Jim Carrey, uh, the Andy Kaufman documentary from, uh, I think it was The Man on the Moon. And man, he channeled that character. Mm. He channeled that character. And I think I, I, I just have come across it more in newspaper snippets, you know, channeling these inner voice or doing this. I'm like, oh, you're using that term now. But, right, you know. <laughs> right, right. Well, it, it is, it, when I thought about perhaps calling it something else. I, I explored different synonyms to that and it really does make sense. It's exactly what's happening. It's energy that channels through a conduit. And, and do you think channeling can be like different forms? I mean, maybe the medium or the psychic is channeling in some way. In some way they might be. And sure, certainly create, there's creative channeling. I, I believe that people that write fiction very well or create other forms of art, music, whatever, they without even claiming to or even thinking about it, they are channeling in some way. And it's kind of like you're bringing through a bigger aspect of yourself that's funneled, normally funneled in a very tiny hose pipe into the human exactly. form, but you're able to widen that funnel exactly. to, right. yeah, to, 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 to a, a greater part. But maybe, you know, because I've always thought to myself, well, is that, you know, is that really helping us? Because if that's not us and we're going to a greater part, then how am I learning from that? But it's all one. It is all one. And it really, truly, I, you know, for what I believe sincerely, as I did with the Reiki sessions I've done, is that a person will only be told, if it's all done in light and in love, what they can handle and what they need to hear. And so also I trust explicitly that Joshua would never say anything that would hurt a person or harm a person. And, and I, because I do trust it, I can really relax into the process. It's not like I have to remain vigilant in some way. No, no. Um, has he ever covered law of attraction or you know, attracting the life that you, that you would want in a sense? Has that kind of come through in bits and pieces? I'm sure it has, but yeah. again, I, because I'm not sure exactly what he has said to various people, mm -hmm. um, we, we have asked, I mean, when for the, for the website, you know, that the little snippets I post, um, certainly I've asked on a general level. It's interesting, my website has more general questions. People don't usually want to know about the universal truths. They want to know about their health or their love life or whatever it is. Well, that's where they're at. Exactly. Yeah. Although I do have, I have some regular clients who spend perhaps half of their session with personal things and then I believe they do go into because they're curious they're they're mm -hmm. the seekers they're the mm -hmm. ones who really are trying to have true growth which goes beyond their personal needs right I know what that feels so, so, that, <laughs> so I believe that does happen yeah I, I, I can sympathize with that um, okay so if people want to get in contact with you as well then they would go to your website yes I have a website and that is? That is. See, now it gets tricky, that name, that Latvian name. It's zintischanneling.com. Z-I-N. Z-I-N-T-I-S. -I yeah. So yes, you have the Z. Z-E-N-T-E-S. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but it's it's phonetic. Latvian is a phonetic language. Zintis of course. Channeling dot com. Okay, well, thank you for that website as well, and we'll we're linking that throughout the interview. Um, so you're not. Uh, what would be your plans? If I said to you, what was your plans for the future for this work? Uh, do you, do you have you considered that at all? I have. I, I actually I have I have I would like very much to do more uh, work, private work, private sessions, group sessions. Um, they, they, because the wonderful thing about the channeling, at least the way I do it, is it's not a full trance, so I can do it myself. It's a partial trance, so I can do it by Skype or I can do it by phone um, through speakerphone um, and. In, in a group, but I also am very drawn to the idea. I do. I write some fiction, and in the fantasy, magical fiction kind of genres. And I have always wanted to ask Joshua to help me in this process, or to to provide someone else who would help me actively in this process, so that it would be almost like automatic writing. I have yet to do it, but it is a goal of mine to really bring that aspect of active channeling into a work of fiction, which you know, Jane Roberts did a little bit with Oversoul 7, was yes, that it? that's it, yes. Um, which was interesting, I mean, for what it was, and I, you know, as a literary work, I'm not sure how well it worked, but you know, it, it, certainly she, she attempted to do that, and, and so it's, it, that's, that's a little goal of mine, too. That's fascinating. That's fascinating that you say that, okay. And that's very, well, why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah. why not? Yeah. Exactly. And it's just a matter of, again, finding the trust that it'll work. You know, sitting down one day and like closing my eyes and going into that space and I don't know, with my hands on the keyboard or I, I'd rather not dictate it. I'd rather have the process flow organically. Um, but I might have, I might dictate it, you know. Okay, so you've been the keyboard, typing that away. Right, or, or, yeah. with, a, or the, with a pen in my hand, where yeah. I, you know, maybe keep yeah. my eyes open, just enough to kind of see that I'm, you know, actually writing. But th th that's something I'm, I'm ready to do, you that know. That is fascinating. Okay, yeah. well, we'll put that out there for anyone yeah, okay. that might, might want to yeah. contact you for that. Okay, well, I think uh, let's, let's go and bring um, Joshua in. And uh, let's see where that conversation takes us. Well, have fun. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll just bring myself down and um, you'll know when Joshua has arrived. myself to the beautiful earth. Creatures of the earth, the animals, the plants, beings who are three-dimensional and other dimensional. I open myself to the four directions of the earth, the east, the west, the north, and the south. I open myself to masters, teachers, guides, all beings of light. And most of all, I open myself now to Joshua, inviting him to join us to offer wisdom and guidance. For this, I give thanks. So it is. Greetings, friend. And we come together on this fine day upon your world to discuss wisdom for the masses, if you shall. We do not exactly know where you would like to go with this discussion, but we are always happy to oblige for it is our nature, it is what we have agreed to do to assist mankind, is to bring our own little version of wisdom through to allow others on your world to make decisions, to evaluate what they find prudent, what they find interesting, perhaps what they would wish to explore. And so we are also today very pleased to perhaps have a wider audience than we generally do. And we will allow you to ask us questions to see where you would like to take this conversation. Well, thank you very much, uh, Joshua. It's great to be in your presence. Great to have you here. 
Um, first of all, why the name Joshua? You see, we are not anything as you would define us. We are a figment of your imagination, perhaps. We are simply energy. We have no gender. We have no physical location as you would determine it. And you ask for a name. The name was one that we felt on some level fit within the concept of who we are in terms of your own biblical history, in terms of how the channel also responds to certain energy. For we also realize that names do have energy. There is a particular sequence of sounds that exists in the word Joshua. It is not primarily why we chose this. It was also a name of convenience. It was something that everyone felt comfortable with. And with everyone, we mean ourselves and we mean the channel and also seemingly the people that we work with, that we have conversations with. They all seem to respond well to the name Joshua. Thank you. So, have you worked with Zintus in any previous lives? And now I understand on my journey that lives are not past or future, but are you working with him on any lives in this, um, I can't even say this reality, can I? Are you working with uh, Zintus in other lives? Indeed, interesting question. We are familiar with his energies. That is why our energy is the one that was ultimately selected to fit best with his energy. His energy, as you may know, does continue from lifetime to lifetime. There are adjustments, there are certain changes, there are radical physical changes, but the energetic signature, the pattern that any human being carries is similar. And yes, on that level, we are familiar with his energy. Have we worked together in that sense? No, he has never actually opened himself in that form of as a channeler, as allowing energy to speak through him. But we are in connection with him in other lifetimes, just as we are in connection with all human beings. You must understand that it is not black and white. It is not that it is one-on-one, -on -one, Joshua and the channel. It is more that our energy transcends everyone and everything upon earth, minute little pieces of it, and the people that want to attach themselves to some of it, to explore it, to perhaps utilize it, they do that. Interesting. So, in this timeline that you come through now, are you working with anybody else? We are not actively being channeled by anyone else. We do offer to anyone with whom we have spoken through the channel to ask for our assistance at any time, to ask to be brought in in a, their own way. Each person will do so differently. And we would say to you that there are a handful, perhaps even more, of the people that have spoken with Joshua who do on occasion think to ask for assistance and then we are available to them. It is naturally not as convenient as hearing words spoken through a human body. It is the thought that comes through. It is the intuitive nudge. And we are able to provide that for people, anyone requiring or requesting it. Interesting. Um, thank you. So, <laughs> what is, why have you come through now? Why are you coming through Zintis in this form? We are very curious about the human condition. We are in some way vested that it turn out well for your species, for your civilization, for your, shall we say, no, we shall not say, for your civilization. And we are vested in helping that come about into a positive light. And this is a way that we can reach some people, perhaps more, perhaps less. There are other energetic beamings that occur that come to you from energies such as us outside of your reality, outside of the third dimension. And we actively also participate in those, but they are not 
as you asked, a one-on-one -on -one type thing. It is truly something that we would enjoy seeing through on some level. Now you must understand when we say we enjoy seeing through, it is, we are speaking in human terms. It would bring us joy on some level to watch the evolution of humankind continue in an upward spiral and not in a downward spiral. And that is perhaps what we are trying to affect. Understood. So I've interviewed now 48 entities, and that's not the right word for you. It's just my human word for it, right? So, you know. Indeed, we are accepting it readily. Okay, so 48 channels. And are you aware of any of the other channels that I've interviewed? Are you aware of each other? Or is it something else, this communication, where it's almost like I'm speaking with different channels in different dimensions? We are not aware in the sense that we are somehow friendly or somehow come from the same area of energy in this cosmos. We are aware that certain truths are spoken in various ways upon your world, which also includes other channels who are channeling other energies. It is if you look at a universal truth, we are part of that. We are part of what you in your particular way of thinking would perhaps discern as being a higher energy, as being one that is lighter or of more of light. And as such, we have a greater awareness. We have a greater ability to transcend your three-dimensional constraints. And therefore, we are able to offer through the channel in our own way what we say. And similarly, other channels will accept energy from other sources, bring it through them and offer wisdom. It may sound very similar in cases. It may sound somewhat different. But understand that it all ultimately is simply energy. Even your three-dimensional physical manifestations are energy in a very dense way. Yes, yes. And... We are just as important to you as you are to us. It's a two-way thing. We are both growing from this, aren't we? It's not, oh my God, my master's arrived. It's actually your progression is our progression. Indeed. And it also allows us to be within a physical manifestation. It is a true experience for us. We are very fortunate. We, Joshua, are very fortunate that we have the opportunity for it is rare for those of our, shall we say, location or our energetic confinement to be able to do that. We are not naturally able to have a physical connection. And as limited as it is through the channel, we are able to sense different aspects of your world. We are even able to see through his memories. We are able to experience to some extent through his experiences. And that is a tremendous growth process for us, which we then share with those around us. It is not just for Joshua at all. Within our realm, there is no such thing as individuality or, or selfishness or self-centeredness. That does not exist. So any information that we can bring back, we allow others to experience it through us. How many am I talking to right now? We have no number. We are infinite in a way, and we are very finite in a way. We condense ourselves to fit into the energetic options that the channel offers to us. But it is impossible for us to give you a number. You must imagine energy that is vast, beyond vast. And part of it simply trickles into the body, the physical body of the channel, and then through which we are able to speak. Well, okay, okay. So in your reality, if there is a difference, is it very much like this, where I am right now? Is there much difference between our reality and your reality? 
Indeed, it is completely different for your reality is three-dimensional physical. It is certain constraints that are placed that are agreed upon. You have gravity on your earth. You have certain limitations to what you are able to do. Whereas in our reality, if we were to call it a reality, there most of those things do not simply exist. We are energy that you would perceive as simply floating in nothingness. And yet there is great structure, but it is not a physical structure. It is an energetic structure that simply comprises our energies that come together, that drift apart, that can create in some way, but it is not physical creation. It is the creation of thought. It is the creation of additional energy or the manifestation of different types of energy. But nevertheless, we do not have your type of reality. Imagine that we are simply a cloud floating upon above your earth, that we are the particles of the cloud that come together perhaps to create the illusion of a shape, but in and of themselves they are simply energy molecules that have condensed into a particular pattern and may disperse tomorrow and become something completely different. Hmm, interesting. Um, so, Zintis has your, the connection with you, but it seems like it's more like an analogy of a team that he's got here, and that his human experience is very valid, yet that you're getting to experience the human experience through Zintis. Indeed, on some level we are, yes. But it is a team, it is not Joshua as an individual and the channel as an individual. It is the channel's energies along with the Joshua energies coming together. And because of his three-dimensional physicality, the ability to manifest spoken word. But when Zintis goes through a hard time or a happy time or whatever experience he's having, you guys get to experience that as well. On some level, it is not as though we are connected all the time. We are available at any time. But he has his own individuality. He has his free will. We are simply observers. When he invites us in, when he invites us to join, either in the conversation, such as we're having, or occasionally for his own personal growth or his own personal, shall we say, comfort, then we come and we provide what is requested. But otherwise, we do not interfere. But if you ask, do we experience? Yes, for he allows us to. It is part of the bargain. As he has invited us to speak through him, he has also granted us access to his memories, to his vocabulary, to his body, and all of that brings a learning experience to us. Now, as I go more on this journey, um and especially with speaking to so many uh, connections like this, it's become very clear to me that the nature of reality is not what I thought it to be at all. The idea that we are born and, you know, come into this world and depart, um, this reality may not be what I thought it was, even to the point where I'm saying to myself, is this a life review? Is this something that I didn't think it was? It's not as linear as I thought it was, or it's not... I, I, you see, we live in other people's museums in the sense that other people that have come have given us their truth on it, and we kind of get attached to that. Is this something different? We do not fully understand your question. Your reality is real for you in that you must have that. As a human being, if all of the rules are tossed up the window, then you do not have the opportunity to experience, to grow, to become who you will be. At the same time, yes, there are overlapping realities, there are overlapping lifetimes. It is not what it appears, but for all practical purposes, for a three-dimensional human being, it is what it appears. As you explore, as you search into various spiritual truths or speak with various channels or beings or entities or energies that are channeled through them, 
you will, as you already have, discover that the truth and the reality is very malleable. It does not need to exist in the form that you have always considered it to be. However, the challenge is that you and billions of other human beings have adopted your reality. So while it can shift for you on some level, it is not able to shift suddenly for every human being. That is a gradual process. It is underway on some level. The shifting is very active at this time, which is why you are able to see the different natures of reality, the different aspects and potentials. And you see those open up for you as you explore and as you grow. And as you present our material, as you will, and that of others, you will reach a wide audience who will then think to themselves, how does this affect me? How am I able to adjust my sense of reality? And it is the ripple in the pond. You are reaching countless people who are then in some way growing and expanding themselves and changing the reality that surrounds you. So that would, yeah, absolutely, I agree with what you've said there, right? But if this was my life review, and it was as real as it is right now, you know, life review is real. This is how it is. This is not the original life that I lived. This is some reflection of the original life where I can get to change it again, right? I'm not saying that's true, I don't know, but to be so encased in the box all the time of, you know, this is just this one lifetime I'm living and there'll be another one, another one. What if it wasn't that at all? Would it matter if it wasn't? Mm, I don't know, but I'm trying to just free myself from what I thought this was. May we comment? Yes. You are experiencing your lifetime. You may look at it in various ways as you are doing. Is it a review of a lifetime on some level? But you must understand that the continuation of life, the continuation of energy in various physical beings, in various physical reincarnations, in various physical forms, be they human or other, there is a continuity. It is not as though a former you has died and everything that it has thought and experienced and lived dies with it. Not at all. It carries through. The memory of what you were does not necessarily carry through. That is a mechanism that is in place. Some people are able to sense or glimpse other lifetimes. Many are not. Right. But what we say to you is that it is not simply this lifetime. It is a continuation. It is you building upon other lifetimes. Why do you think you have this passion to present this material in the way that you are doing? It did not come out of you as a child in this lifetime. There are many lifetimes leading up to this particular way of expression. Yeah. And that is something that you are now experiencing. So on that level, yes, you can review backwards into various lifetimes of when what you are doing now was important, when it was something that you were growing, that you were consciously building upon. And upon death, those aspects of yourself are not lost. They continue if appropriate. It is not that every lifetime you have lived has included this particular goal. No, of course not. Of course not. Okay, then. Well, is there other parallel realities that are very similar to this? You could describe it that way. It is a simplistic way, again, of looking because most human beings cannot understand that if there was an other third dimension, call it 3.1 or yes. 3.7, that it would be almost the same, but not quite. And there would be a person the same as you, but not quite. That is not necessarily true for you are unique energy. What is occurring, if you can eliminate the linear timeline, is that all of your lifetimes are occurring on some level simultaneously. However, it is very simplistic to say it that way, for it is not that it is an un 
shall we say, parallel number of you that are living something similar. It is different experiences. It would become very useless simply to experience variations of the same thing time and time again. It is not in that sense that you are overlapping yourself in some other level. You are being yourself and it is something that is important for you personally to think about that you as a human being are unique and special. You are also a continuation of other lifetimes and the energy that you carry is not necessarily completely unique and special. However, the human being, your particular way of being, your energetic signature in this body is unique to yourself. And that is something that some human beings on a spiritual quest ignore. They do not think that their physicality plays a role in what they wish to become. They strive or yearn toward a non-physical way of being, which shall occur as soon as you die, you will no longer be physical. And therefore, it is important for you to continue upon your chosen path in this lifetime. So why is it some channelers have said to me, that we do have parallel realities. Um, I don't think you're saying we don't, but I think what you're saying is it's not just 3.1 where I'm sat over there while you're over there and it's something very different, isn't it? The parallel lives are something very different to this one. Indeed, that is what we are saying. We do not know why others would say to you, it is a popular concept currently upon your world to imagine that there are variations of yourself living all the different possibilities of different experiences that you decided not to learn on your own or that you chose one way or another way. But you must understand that that is an infinite number of different possibilities, which on some level exists, but it cannot exist in your three-dimensional reality. It can exist in other three-dimensional realities. What you are discussing and what is being perhaps offered to you is the sort of reality that we reside in, where there are infinitive, ultimately, endless choices, possibilities, and manifestations of different ideas, but they are not physical on any level. They are simply energetic. On that same level, energetically, you also are, even within your lifetime, living out different options. That is a little difficult to understand, but when you asked previously you, if you could make adjustments to something that has already happened or make somehow different, you can. It is possible and some humans have learned how to do that, turning back time or making changes within what you would consider the past. Those are options to you, but they are very complicated and most human beings are not at that level where they can even begin to anticipate how that would be done. And therefore them, it is just simply, it must be a linear lifetime lived within this reality. And there are other lifetimes lived within your reality of the same energy, but we do not say that they are going to mirror yours. What is one of the other time, lifetimes that I'm living right now? in this same reality, what, what would one of those be? In any of your other lifetimes are being lived in your reality. It is still a third dimension. It is still your reality, even if you historically consider it to be 2000 years in the past or 2000 years in the future. It is still your reality that you are living on some level simultaneously. But it is not you. It is not the person who is the physical body that we are speaking with. It is the energy of your person. Oh, well, that's interesting. So what you're saying there is all past and future lives. They're all happening now. On some level they are, but it is very difficult for a human mind to grasp nonlinear time. It is attempted. There are various discussions that have been made of that, but nevertheless, 
for you, it is easier to see time in a linear fashion. That is your reality. It is part of your reality, just as gravity or other concepts that everyone buys into. Absolutely, of course. And in these other parallel realities that may be lived out right now, uh, I'm not talking about future or past, I'm talking about well, I suppose there is. It's difficult to, for them. If there's no future or past, yeah. I've just got this idea in my head that there's just more, you know, that, that, why, why, it almost feels to me like there's, there's truths above the truth that you're bringing through now. And it's like, you're not, the truth you bring through now is where we, where we're at, where, what, what, what's needed, right? Indeed. Yeah. You but must the, understand that there are other truths. Truths, if we shall call them truths, it is most likely the incorrect word. They are what could perhaps be termed universal truths, if you wish. The universal concept of what is energy, what is reality, what is in general, is vast. It grows upon layers and layers and layers. They are layers of truth that are perhaps incomprehensible to us. For there is always a place to grow to. There is never a limit to what energy can reach. Okay, could I have spoken to an entity that was above you at some point? Would you have been aware if they was? Could I have done that? It's possible. It's possible that there is certainly energy that is able to formulate a response for you personally that fits your belief system so well that it rings true for you. We do not see that as we speak to you. We see that explaining to you the various levels of who you are in a more three-dimensional linear fashion works better. Perhaps we are miscalculating what you are able to perceive, but on some level we are also speaking to the wider human audience. We are speaking to everyone. And what we perceive the vast majority of being able to handle is the little steps of possibly acknowledging that they are not exactly who they thought they were, that their reality is not the only reality, that their lifetime continues in some way, has a past and a future. But for even this to come through like it is, um, is, is just um, breaks the boundaries of what we think we know. Yeah. Indeed, we are pushing at the boundaries for you as a species to evolve into anything other than becoming extinct. There must be great changes made to what your boundaries are. It is necessary that the vast majority or certainly a majority of you evolve fairly rapidly into a different understanding. And therefore, we are pushing the envelope and others like us are pushing the envelope. You have people upon your earth who do not believe that what we are doing is real. However, they believe that angels are real, that angels speak to them. Religious tokens or icons of some sort communicate with them. And therefore, what we speak to you today is being spoken to others in other forms, in forms that they can accept and that they can then perhaps incorporate into their belief system, pushing their boundaries. And maybe one next lifetime they'll get a bit further and they'll maybe have a conversation like this, or maybe they can do it in this lifetime. Indeed, one must not judge the no. validity or the, shall we say, importantness of a particular way of communication. It is not better or worse. Any one human being who can make contact with an other energy that is outside of the third dimension and truly believe it, allow it to affect belief systems, that particular person will grow. Okay, absolutely. Now I'm being told throughout this uh, journey that I could go to bed tonight, wake up, and I'm not waking up in the same body as I went to bed in, as in my consciousness has shifted to some other reality somewhere because I've made a change. Now, based on the conversation we've had, that's not so. It is so in that if you were to die, it would be that way. 
but to simply neglect your body, to leave it, what would fill your body? What would happen with your body if your consciousness shifted into a different world? Well, that is true. What would happen to the body that I've left? <laughs> I, I never thought about that. Um, I don't know, is something else coming into it? Is, it? is there another version of me that's coming into it that could get more out of that experience than I, I could for, grow from that? Have I moved I on to say that theoretically it is possible within your spiritual scriptures there are instances of that happening where a particular energy consciousness vacates a body and another one takes over. But it is very rare. It is possible. Yes, your question was, is it possible? Yes. Well, that is was my question. Likely? No. Well, yeah, I, right. So we're not shifting realities all the time as we shift to newer truths. As we grow spiritually, we're not shifting to other realities that would be more in alignment with where we are now. There's not, you know, an untold amount of versions of this reality taking place in different ways. And as we grow, it, we shift into those other realities. That would be true. However, you must understand that within your reality, as you call it, as your reality is today, if you are to expand your particular consciousness, expand spiritually, expand in that way, your reality will shift with you. What you perceive today as being very good or very bad, if you grow, if you become more aware, if you become more loving, if you become more of any different variations of growth, what you would see if you look at the same thing that today is black or white might be gray, it might be red, it might be something completely different. And you see, your perception of your reality does shift. For many people it does not, for they choose not to grow. So I'm shifting. You as you shift, what your am I reality... shifting? Yeah, but okay, so you say my reality shifts, but I mean, what, what my consciousness is leaving this and going to another version of this that, that's more in alignment with where I need to be, or what, 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 what's, what's shifting? No, you, our awareness or your perception of your reality shifts. Think back at an earlier time in this lifetime of some belief that you held, something that it may not be necessarily particularly important, but something that you felt strongly about, that you thought this is the way it is. And yes. Let's be very simplistic. Let us simply say, as a very young child, you believed in a Santa Claus, that you right. believed in something like that. That is your reality. For that particular stage of you, that is your reality. As you grow, as you expand mentally, spiritually, energetically, the reality shifts around you. You must understand that for then, for you, there is no such thing as a Santa Claus or whatever those beliefs are. We are very beings, very simplistic. However, upon your world, there will be millions or billions of people for whom the Santa Claus still exists. So where does the analogy then, that, for example, that you create your reality come into this, where if I create a reality that I don't, you know, I'm going to manifest whatever it is, you know, whatever it is I want to manifest, that's for my highest good and that's open to, you know, it happening the way it's meant to happen. So, for example, if someone says, you know, I manifest a world where there's no war or I manifest a world where there is war, well, you can't have no more war and war in one existence of sharing the same reality, can you? No, indeed. And that is a problematic concept for what occurs is that as a species, as the billions of people that you are, there is an agreed upon limitation of the reality. There are particular rules that you abide by, which we have mentioned, that of linear time, that of gravity, that of other aspects of core beliefs that every human shares. And they are there in place to create a stability to your reality. Now, if you say, is there a parallel earth where there is no war, where there is whatever it is that you would wish to see? Yep. On some level, we would say to you, yes, there is, but it is not in existence within your realm. It is not something that you can simply step across for you have made a contractual, shall we say, even obligation 
to be part of this reality to play it through. However, as a human species, many of you have decided that you would attempt to shift certain aspects of your reality into certain other aspects, which would include the lack of war and moving toward a more loving, a more kind, a more beautiful earth. And so there are many, many, many of you, and in fact, most of you listening to these words, be it now, today, through you, or later on, are in that position. You firmly believe that positive growth is possible, that the shifting of reality. However, it is still the same reality for you, as long as you inhabit this body. Right. What we do agree with that if you found within a different reality a similar body or the same body that you would then be able to migrate into, allowing that someone else is able to migrate into yours or you are ready to die, then in fact you can shift it. But that is not the purpose of being alive as a human being upon your current earth. So you did mention a, an Earth 2, a second Earth that didn't have war there, that, that maybe exists. Um, and is there an aspect of everyone's soul on, on those other parallel realities? Is there an aspect that of an incarnation that's happened that's completely different to this one? We will say simplistically yes, but it is with a great deal of caution. For you see, it is not you cannot picture it. It's not like there are two Earths spinning side by side and one is one and the other is another. Yeah. It exists in a different way that is completely unknown to you. On some level, it can exist where you are now. It is the whole idea of simultaneous lives. It is that everything exists at the same time, that your cave age people and your future people all live upon the same earth. However, as you have agreed, the earth has changed. The earth is shifting. The earth's continents are not where they were millions of years in the past. Different civilizations have come and gone. And that is what creates this particular reality that you are living upon. So the second earth, and we do caution you, it is not it is a bit of a pipe dream, for it is not that one can readily step across and be in the world that they wish to be in. Naturally, many of you would choose that type of an earth, but part of the lesson that you have agreed to participate in, part of the exercise, is to attempt to create that earth in your own reality. So perhaps viewing it as a template, as the possibility as the template of what could be would be a better way of looking at the two particular possibilities. Very true. And I, 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 I agree with you there. So let's go to some more basic questions then. <laughs> um, well, I th well, you know, I don't, I, I've got to ask the basic ones because I need it to be able to help people with, but really, you know, <sighs> I almost feel like when I cross over, I'm not going anywhere. I don't think it's, I, I, I'm not too sure where you're at. I don't think it's that different. I think you just might be in the room over there having a coffee, but you're somehow transmitting over here. I don't, don't know if it's so much different. It can be, it doesn't need to be. We are not physical. We simply are energy. We do not inhabit your type of reality. But will I have the experience that you're having one day of this non-reality? Do I? Absolutely. It is your goal. It is the goal of every human being, every soul that inhabits your earth to move out of the three dimensional realities and into other experiences, other existences. That is something that you all most likely will achieve at some point or another. But again, it's the linear time. We imagine that for some it will be three lifetimes from now. For others, it will be a million lifetimes from now. You see, there are different options. One is not better than the other. It is simply that one has gone through more manifestations or more particular incarnations. So when you say that if you die, you feel you will simply remain, 
On some level you can, but you will also find that you do not wish to. It is something that you have finished and then you move on to something different. It may be another physical body, it may not be. However, it is a continuation of your energy. So therefore the experiences of this lifetime and the particular strong emotions that you may have had, those will transcend with you and then regroup into a different template of another person or another being or another type of energy, but they remain with you. Thank you. What is the main purpose of us being here and having this experience of not un, uh, remembering our connection of where we came from and definitely having no clue of where we're going to? It is a growth experience. It is a growth experience on a very basic level. As you can imagine, the three-dimensional experiences are very limited in what they can offer. They are very much based on human beings' belief systems. They are very limited in what they can explore. And therefore it is a, shall we say, we do not wish to say a lower grade for it is not different in that sense. It is a beautiful place to be in that you can experience three dimensionality, physicality, you have physical senses, you have human physical bodies that can feel things and do things. And all of that is a great joy. We, for instance, do not have that opportunity at this time. However, it is also the lessons of learning how not to kill each other, how not to destroy your world. Those are all very part of what you as a species are attempting to do. There are those of you who are attempting to pull others out of the morass, and there are those who are on some level perfectly happy to stay where they are. And you see that every day. And that is part of the lesson. You are on some level in first grade and on some level we are perhaps in the university, but we know that there is another school above us and there are many experiences for you to explore. But do not think of them as being inferior in any way. When you die, you may choose to move to a different dimension. You may choose to live your next existences non-physically. And that is an option that you will have, or you may choose to return to the earth with the idea that you, this time around, will make an even bigger impact, or this time around you will do and accomplish something different. Absolutely. And when people uh, are coming out with different ideas to this, that's perfectly fine as well, isn't it? Because um, um, that's, could you say, their truth until it becomes um, clearer to them that there is, there is this way. Indeed, we are speaking rather simplistically at this time, but we are speaking to a certain audience perhaps. What we are telling you is that there are so many ways of explaining different concepts. And as you say, every person will hear their own truth and certain things will resonate. Some things that Joshua has said today for some people upon your earth would be considered the devil speaking. You see, there are many different beliefs and many different ways of handling what occurs upon your world. And that is all part of the growth experience. How important is love and coming from that space in this human experience? The love energy is paramount to everything. It truly is. We do not speak naturally of physical love, which is a manifestation of that, but the love energy is critical for humans and for your civilization to even survive. And therefore it is very important. It is something that every conscious, shall we say, human being ought to cultivate on some level, that they can grow, they can become more loving in whatever way they're able to. For some, it may be very tiny little steps. For others, it may be very vast. But the energy, the love energy is truly what drives and, shall we say, creates continuously your universe, your particular, not only your reality, but our reality and all of the realities within our universe. I see, I see. And um, 
are certain situations in our life predestined? Um, are, are, you know, are we the victims of we've chosen to have this experience? They are not predestined in that they cannot be avoided. However, most human beings in their pre-life agreements or their pre-life, shall we say, briefing, decide that there are certain markers in the lifetime that is coming up that should be experienced. And therefore, there are certain events or certain types of events, certain traumas sometimes, certain joys sometimes, that are not necessarily predestined, but they are likely to occur in one form or another. Okay, and <laughs> right, right. Um, is there such thing as karma? There is the energetic balance. It is simply that on a soul level, when you are no longer human, when you are no longer three-dimensional, certain aspects, certain, shall we say, activities that have been done, we do not wish to judge, but certain energetic coloration needs to be balanced sometimes. And so therefore, yes, it is a voluntary process. It is not that one is forced to become something. It is simply that on a soul level, certain karmic experiences as a balancing to the experience are then added into a lifetime. Is there councils when we cross over or is it? Generally, you counsel yourself, for you must understand that what you are at this moment, your personality, your ego, your consciousness, is part of a much vaster one. So therefore, when you cross over, when you are no longer physical, then aspects of your soul that are much wiser and that are much more in tune with the big picture, if you will, come into play and simply advise as to what has happened, what has been done, how that could have been different. And on some level, yes, it is a council, but it is not a group of other beings that are necessarily sitting at a desk and making judgment upon you. Right. Okay. Um, and we have the free will to incarnate and go where we wish to go after this existence? Free will applies to the physical reality. On some level, there are certain rules that dictate how the energy of a soul will reincarnate or will go. Your free will will not exist, for that will no longer be part of who you are. The experiences that you bring back to your soul energy will make those decisions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. What is, um, how could we live a better life while being here on planet Earth? What's some of the sort of ideas that you can give us that we've maybe forgotten? It is the same as what everyone else will tell you, simply to live a better life, to treat all people, all persons, all animals, all plants as though they were yourself, to be kind to everyone, to love everyone. You see, that brings growth. Destructive behavior, hateful behavior, fearful behavior does not bring growth. The more growth you can bring, you as an individual, you and all other individuals, the more the earth will flourish and the more it will move into a place of lightness and light. And that is ultimately what every individual can do. It is not expected that most people will have some grand agenda that they can fulfill. Their lives are not set up that way. They are what you would consider very ordinary lives, or in some cases, very underprivileged lives. And yet within those, it is the individual choices that add up to how a life is lived and ultimately what influence or difference it makes, whether into the good or into the less so good. Right, yeah, yeah. And... It, we're here to have a human experience as well. It's not the, um, let's all start dressing up in white robes and, you know, get the harps out, the harps out and, um, you know, start playing heavenly music. It's about, you know, uh, having and doing what we wish to do without 
knowingly hurting anyone or ourselves, I would guess. Indeed, that is the joy of being human. That is what many humans, particularly those on a so-called spiritual path, forget. That the true joy of your particular life upon earth is the fact that you are a human being with physical senses and the ability to explore through those and with a body. What is deja vu? It is simply the tapping in of other energy of different, shall we say, reality. Now we will not say realities. We will say different aspects of your reality that has already occurred or that will occur. It is simply a bleed through of other lives or of other situations. Every human being experiences deja vu. Every ex human being at some point is in a location, for instance, that they have been before in a different body. So therefore it is not necessarily past, it could be future. But if you find yourself on the exact same spot in a different timeline, then you may remember or suddenly feel that you have been there at a different time. And that is exactly what's happening. You are simply tapping into one of the linear streams of your other lifetimes. When I cross over, would I ever be able to relive this moment again? In your mind, you could, but not in the physical body, naturally. But you could bring yourself, you could create this particular moment, you could create this conversation, you could create our energy. It would be as real as you are now. And all of that you could re-experience. It would ultimately, most likely, not change. It would be a replay of what is happening at this moment. So I couldn't go back and ask different questions. <laughs> You would choose not to. You would have many of the answers yourself. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, what is your main message as a group? We simply would wish to assist humans, as many humans as possible, to move toward the light. And we do not mean toward the light of some eternal light. We mean toward a lightness. We mean toward a goodness. We mean toward a way of being that is kinder and more loving to those around you. And we do what we can through the channel and in other ways to facilitate that. I'm, I'm trying to ask those really deep questions, right? Because it's me as a, a seeker that's on, on this path and it's like, I don't believe anything I'm told sometimes. I know there's more. I love you, right? And I know at the truth that you're coming through, it is completely correct. But there's something missing. There's something more. For me to have this experience and to be able to look through the back of, you know, to, to, to know that I'm, I'm aware of my awareness. It's almost like, well, hang on, where's the illusion then? Am I dreaming this? You're asking the age-long philosophical question of awareness, illusion, and all that. On some level, yes, you are illusion, although we have said earlier that you are not. You are three-dimensional. If you wish in your mind to create other aspects of yourself, you can do that. But it does not particularly serve the purpose to fragment yourself in that way. What serves your purpose, your lifetime, is to continue on a chosen path. It does not mean you cannot alter the path. It does not mean that you cannot expand the path. You have unlimited choices in that sense. But to abandon your consciousness or your awareness serves you very little purpose other than to have to start over again in a different situation. Mm -hmm. You see, what you have accomplished in this lifetime has been built upon experience upon experience. That is the way that it is construed in a linear timeline. And therefore, what you are thinking and doing and saying at this time is built upon everything that has come up to this point. And it points toward where you are going into your future. It points toward what your growth, your awareness will be. And we do not mean to diminish who you are. You are a spark of soul, ultimately a spark of God within a physical manifestation. But nevertheless, you have set certain parameters for yourself. 
And those are physical parameters. They're three-dimensional parameters that you wish to explore. Yeah. On some level, you made certain choices. They are not, as you asked, predestined, but nevertheless, you made certain decisions about where you will explore, what you will feel, what emotions you may encounter. And those are all part of what is coming up for you now. It is an evaluation of sorts. This is also a very tricky time upon your earth. And those who are sensitive to certain energy shifts and certain possible outcomes are very much fragile and you are one of those people you also are concerned with where things are going and on some level you would rather not even experience that you would rather leave and go somewhere else but yet you have made a commitment and you will see it through that is who you are i do actually like this plane i mean there's some great movies <laughs> sex is good yeah you know, the occasional recreational drug, I don't mind, right? There's no addiction to any one of them, I don't think completely, but I do like being here. Yes, I am concerned with the way it's going, but I also realize as well, if you want to change the world, change yourself. Indeed, that is that adjustment of reality that we spoke of. As you grow, your reality changes with you. So who created who here? Did I create you or did you create me? Perhaps we are separate of each other. What is God then? The God that you refer to as God is, a, shall we say, a greater energy than any of us. Than Joshua's energy or human energy or other energies that you have encountered. And yet at the same time, we are all aspects of God. You in your level of where you are, we in our level of where we are. You see, God is energy. God is a manifestation of many different energies, but at the same time, he, she is energy. How can there be an infinitive universe? That is fairly complicated for a human mind to grasp. For it is not even on a scale that you could conceive yourselves. It is simply too vast. It is infinitive in your sense of perception. Is it truly infinitive? Is it truly have no boundary anywhere ever? That is a question that even we cannot answer. We have not seen where it would end, but perhaps it does. And if you're even not aware of that, right, where the hell are you coming from then? Is this uni is our universe your universe? We are part of the universe, yes. But you wouldn't reside in, if, if you were to give me some coordinates that even we would never be able to get to in any lifetime, you still wouldn't reside in our known universe, would you? We are within your universe in that we are within the same energy patterns that constitute your universe and our universe. If our energies, if we were from a different universe, we would not be speaking to you through the channel. It would not be possible. You must understand that as there are numbers of different types of animals and beings upon your world, let us simply stay with three-dimensional ones. There are millions, if not billions, of different types of insects, and there are mammals, and there are plants, and every one is a living entity. And so it is within the universe. If you could imagine that human civilization is one particular insect, and there are billions and billions and billions of others and there are evolutions and there are growths and there are manifestations all of which occur continuously you see and for some reason you right now have chosen to be within the three-dimensional confine well, well wait a minute hang on is there other infinitive universes like the one that we're in right now there most likely are. We do not know that. For as we said, we do not know the boundaries of our universe, and therefore we are unable to perceive other universes. Well, what's different between your... So is your universe infinitive, do you feel? Our universe is our, yours and ours. It is one universe. But then where's, where's, where's the place we go to when we cross over them? If we're going to personify the word heaven, you're saying then that where we... Where we Hang on a minute. Is there a greater part of us 
that we call the Oversoul or the Higher Self, is that contained within this universe? Is that your truth? Absolutely. We are all part of this universe. We are all part of the same energy. So, so when one's crossing over, one's going into a reality of what? This it is, universe. It, it is another aspect of this universe. It is another dimensional aspect of this universe. It is simply a different place. You ask about coordinates. Where are we as compared to where are you? It is not possible to explain that for your coordinates are based in a three-dimensional reality. When you look at your sky, you see particular physical aspects that are part of your three-dimensional reality. We could pinpoint any one of those and say, this is where we are. But truly it is not, for we are outside of your three-dimensional reality. But isn't the universe, as we, <laughs> as we understand it, but isn't the universe made of an atomic structure in a sense? Are you, what, are, you, are you saying you're beyond the atomic structure? Indeed, we are energy, but energy is subatomic in its structure. But the universe, if you are asking about your physical universe, that is something different, but we inhabit the same universe. For you see, our realities can cross over. Well, what's the difference between the physical universe that I'm calling the infinitive universe compared to your universe that you may not call? We do not believe that there is a difference. And that is why we reside in the same universe. And when you no longer reside in your physical body, you will remain in the same universe. You will not leave universe, but you will leave physicality. You will leave your dimension. So the awareness becomes part of the awareness of the universe. It's your, your, but if you're a part of, well, I'm jumping here, but if you're awareness and you're aware of the universe, you're saying you're not even aware of where this infinitiveness ends. We the are universe. not. We are perhaps, as you would consider us more advanced in our abilities, that we are not physical, but we are not God. We are not the being that may or may not know if and well, where this universe ends. Well, what was the, our scientists, as limited as it is, talks about a Big Bang. Indeed, but there are physical manifestations. We believe that perhaps you are referring to the three-dimensional universe, but we are talking about the universe, the universe that has multiple dimensions, one upon another, that perhaps has multiple realities and simultaneous realities. But all of that is housed within one universe. Which is the universe, is that the universe I'm saying that's the, if I was to get in a spacecraft, which I'm not, right, is that the universe I'm referring to? That's, I'm saying, what am I saying? I don't know. The universe that's out there is, you, you mentioned there the parallel universes and all that stuff, right? Is that still contained within the infinitiveness of what's out there? We cannot answer that. We know our universe, which to us seems infinitive, but we do not know. Perhaps there is a boundary and perhaps on the other side of the boundary is another infinitive or finite universe that is different that has different, completely different energies, that is completely different in some way. We do not know that. So I may be speaking to some people who are actually connected to entities that are in the other space that we don't know, maybe? It's possible. We would think that it is unlikely for the energy to cross into this universe. Right. But you must understand that we are not physical. We are not three-dimensional. We do not exist within your three-dimensional universe. We exist within the larger universe that constitutes all of the dimensions that you also can become part of. As you die, as you leave your three-dimensional body, you will not leave the universe, the bigger universe. On some level, yes, you would leave your three-dimensional universe if you choose to look at it that but, way. But in the three-dimensional universe, is there an end to it? In the three-dimensional universe I live in, if I was to if somehow to get on some crop... Yes, there is. For in your three-dimensional universe, it is dictated by your and other three-dimensional beings' awareness, which is limited. However, the bigger universe that encompasses your three-dimensional and our dimensional and the dimension where you will reside after you pass from human life, those are all part of a universe that may or may not be finite. But the three-dimensional universe, that if I was on the International Space Station right now and I'm in that 3D universe, right, 
our scientists talk about it being infinitive. And you're saying maybe it's not. We are saying also that most likely none of them are infinite. For on some level, there is a stop and a start. But what, what happens when you get to the stop? What, you, what, you go against a wall? What's, does it, do you know? We do not know. Perhaps you are God. Perhaps you create a new universe. Perhaps you have lived for so long and experienced everything that every living being within your universe has experienced that you become bored and you create a new universe. Well, you'd have to be dead to do that, wouldn't you? <laughs> It is unlikely that a human being would create a new universe. It is possible for energy to create a new universe. So in our lifetime, we, you know, in, in the human species, you know, however many billions of years we've got left, um, if we do have that long, we're never going to get to the edge of the 3D universe. That's not, I can never see that being a reality. No, that is not a reality. And so we'll never know is it ever infinitive? We'll never, you know, it's, it's almost like whatever this setup is that we're in, it doesn't want us to know the bigger truth. No, it does not. But you must understand that it's not meant to. Those are the limitations that three-dimensional human beings have placed upon their existence. They are very limiting. That really pisses me off. <laughs> that is why you will one day die and you will know other truths. So get on with this goddamn one. Indeed, enjoy what you have going for you at this moment. Yes. We don't do that enough, do we? No, as a species, generally, you do not. I do want to be here. I'm just figuring, I'm just trying to figure out, if I go further with my thinking, will it bring us back to an answer that's even helping to us be, to, for us to be here even more? Or, well, I don't know, I guess that's what I'm asking it for. Yeah. Well, there are no answers, are there? And not everything is obvious. Thank you, life, for making it that difficult. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay, all right. Um, for final messages, what would you like to say as a final message? As a final message, we would encourage you to continue your growth and always to anticipate what you are doing speak in kindness and also think of loving way to address every issue within your life. Start with your own life, not just you, but anyone else hearing these words. That is the advice we give you. Do not jump to grand conclusions. Do not think that you need to be anything other than what you are, for you must realize that you are perfect. You may not feel perfect. You may have physical limitations. You may have other limitations. But for your particular existence in your body, in your lifetime, there is a perfection for that is what you have selected. And when a human being can be at peace with that, then the growth can truly happen. And that is what we advise you and that is what we wish you, that you are able to accept who you are and to grow and at the same time to just simply provide a loving environment, a loving space around yourself so that anyone you come into contact with, anyone that reaches into your space can be rewarded with that little bit of love and then they will bring it and take it and pass it on. It seems to me that our progression is very important to you, that our spiritual progression is your spiritual progression. So us annihilating ourselves uh, is not really helpful to the overall progression of the universe. That is true. It is not that it would end the universe. We would simply count our losses and move on. Your energies would not be lost. It would be only be the spiritual experience of the human condition that would be lost the human civilization, but we tell you now that other civilizations have come and gone, other species have come and gone. The energies of the souls are not lost, they simply regroup, they move into a different way of being, they resume their own progression of growth and their own progression of experiences. But nevertheless, 
if we were to be able to experience sadness, yes, it would make us very sad for there is a great deal of potential in human beings and the human condition and human civilizations. And it would be a shame on some level if it was simply annihilated and that it would need to be rebooted and started over again. Can we create the life that we want? Indeed, it is a matter of growth and it is a matter of perception. Not everyone can become materially wealthy. Not everyone can become something that they are not made to be in terms of physicality. But nevertheless, every human being has the potential to create a comfortable and also peaceful existence for themselves. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for bearing with me. And as helpful it was to me, I'm pretty sure it was helpful to you as well. Indeed, it has been a pleasure. Thank you. Good day. Much love. Good